Hey there, uh, the good people over at TastyTrade.com did a great market measure yesterday on 7-24-2014 called Beta Waiting and Pairs Trades. Um, I watched the video, I thought it was fantastic, I wanted to recreate it in Excel. Got hung up on one little detail, but it was a little silly, but I sent an email over to uh, TP and Mike over at Tasty Trade in the research department and they set me straight. Uh, got back to me super fast, so I thought I would uh, pay it forward a little bit by putting this video together with what they helped me out with and what I um, put together from the video. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about or you didn't see the video, head over to tastytrade.com, go to the archives, find market measures, go to 72414 and watch the video on basis on um, beta weighted pairs trading. Um, it's fantastic, absolutely packed full of stuff. All the credit goes to those guys. I am just uh, doing a little bit of reverse engineering. So the first thing that they did in the video, if you watched it, is they created a basis, and that's pretty easy. That's just the Russell divided by the Qs, and we'll copy that down, and we'll grab our dates. They made a line chart out of it, so we'll make a line chart out of it. It's just that easy. We'll make it look a little prettier than that. And we'll go about 1.1. There we are. And give it a name so we don't get confused. And there's the basis. And this is what they're looking at. We're a bit stretched here. Um, we're down at 1.18. We were just up at 1.16 like two weeks ago. And that's Grandma Yellen talking down the small caps. Oh, Yellen, why are you giving us stock advice? Haven't you done enough? Uh, the next thing they did after the basis chart was they put together a histogram. So to do that, we need bins. And the low number is 1.15, and the high number is 1.5. So we'll just grab that and pull it down to 1.5. And then we're going to need data, and data analysis, and histogram. And our input range is going to be our basis column and our bin range is going to be our bins and we need to check chart output and I'm going to put this right in this sheet on G2 so I'm going to click OK and I'm going to get a histogram just like they did and you can see what they're talking about we are all the way out here at 1.18 so we're well away from the average which is going to be somewhere in the 133 135 range all right, so this was the second chart that they put out. The next one they put out was correlations, and to do correlations, we need daily returns. This was the silly mistake I made. Done it a million times, but had a little bit of an issue with it. But Tasty Trade set me straight as they have in the past. So IWM, and we need returns for the Qs. We don't need ID, uh, we don't need uh, the spider returns for correlations, but we do need them um, in the future for beta weighting, so we're just going to do them now. So we need the spies, and to get that return, we take today, we subtract yesterday, and we divide by yesterday. And we copy that down. And we'll grab that, and well, uh, that's a perfect doji that day. So we'll copy this down, copy this down, and now that we have our returns, we can do correlations. So they did um, 30, 60, 90, and 120 day correlations. And in the spirit of timeliness, I'm just going to do um, 30 and 60 day, and then you can come back in here and do as much as you want. So we'll go down to cell 32 because we're missing two cells of data and we'll do equals C-O-R-R-E-L open parentheses two arrays. First one's a return of our IWMs. Second one is a return of the Qs. Close it up. Copy it down. That's our 30-day rolling correlation. And then we need to go down to cell number 62 and do the same thing. So equals C-O-R-R-E-L we need two arrays. First one is our IWMs. Second one is our Qs, our, our Qs. And we'll hit enter and copy that down. And we have our correlation. And if we want to just put up a quick um, line chart like they did, we can do so. Line chart. And we need to changes here. Just throw our 
labels in so you don't get confused. Like I said, they put a lot of stuff into this video. It's really, really a great video. So right here we can take this and we can make it like 0.4 so we can see a little better. Now there's had four lines, like I said, 90 and 120. You're just going to get two more lines with a little bit less. Uh, variants in them and you can see theirs looks a little bit different because they're just using this uh, this part starting here um, in sort of mid 2013 running forward I think so they 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 omit these two spikes down um, if if these spikes went against you in this trade if we had them again I you'd take the pain uh, in that trade but that's that's the nature of the beast. So this was their correlation chart. So the next thing they did was the beta weighting, and that's pretty interesting stuff when they get into it. Now they did two charts, one for the Russell, um, one for the Qs, or one for the NASDAQs, and they did 30, 60, 90, and 120 day betas on each one. So it's eight lines of data. I'm just going to do two. They um, ended up using 60 days for the trade, so I'm going to do 60, 60 days as well. So I'm going to say beta IWM 60 day, and I'm going to say beta um, QQQ 60 day here. And then you can come back and put the betas in like they did. So if we go in here, all right, so if we want to do a beta, we need equals the correlation again. And this time we need our SPY data. So we're going to grab the return of the SPYs versus we're doing uh, Russell's first. So the returns of the IWM, close them up, and we're going to multiply that by the standard deviation of the returns of the Russell. Close, and we're going to divide that by the standard deviation of the spiders one more time and we're going to close that up and there's our beta and we're going to do the same thing over here so we're equal C O R R E L we need two arrays first one's going to be spiders again second one is going to be the Q's come on and then we're going to once again multiply that by the standard deviation of the return of the Q's and then we're going to divide that by the standard deviation of the returns of the spiders not so bad and that's going to give us our beta there and they did um, they did a bunch of charts. Well, they did two charts with a bunch of lines on it because they did four, um, four uh, time periods each. So I'm gonna um, just skip that, and I'm gonna just do one line of 60 days each. And that's the beta for, and it looks like we're at about maybe one point, we'll just say point eight here. So we make sure we get everything, make that a little bit bigger. And they did one more, they did the cues. And you can go back and just put in the, the same exact formula and you can use the 30, 90, and 120 day data um, series that we're not going to use right here. So we got one more chart to do and this was their last chart and all we have to do is give it a name and we will clean it up a little bit. We'll make this 0.8 so you can see the oh, 0.8. There we go. And there's your two beta charts. And they didn't stop there um, because they had an interesting table at the end. Um, it looked a little something like this. They had symbol. We're using the IWMs and the Qs. And they did um, beta. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use their data from the 
presentation and then I'm, I'll come back and show you something interesting after that. So they, theirs was 1.5 and 1.2. They, they they made it easy. And then you you did percent of of total in there. And the percent of total uh, requires a total. So we need a sum of our betas, which is going to go right here. And the percent of total equals the beta of the IWM divided by the total beta. And the Qs is equal to the beta of the Qs divided by the total. And that's going to give you 55% and 45%. And that's um, how you want to um, proportion out the, the sides of this trade to be market neutral based on, based on the beta. So um, if we have a trade size of $10,000, we can um, so if you if you have a position of higher beta you want to have less money in the higher beta instrument because it's going to move more and you want more money in the lower beta so in order to do that we need equals one minus the percentage and then multiply by the total value of the trade and then this one's the same way equals one minus uh, I'm sorry, equals 1 minus that, close parentheses, and multiplied by the total value of the trade. And we can check it by hitting the sum of these two numbers, and that's going to give us $10,000. So now you can come in here if you want, and you can do um, a $15,000 trade, or you can do a $21,000 trade, and it's just going to change the numbers for you. And that is basically where they left off. Um, but if you're beta weighting something, you don't just put the trade on and leave it for a long period of time because the betas are going to shift and you'll end up either too long on one end or too short on another. So um, what you need is you need to have your beta updated bas well, basically every day because you want to know um, whether you, whether you or not you're neutral. And so in order to do that, if we're going to update the spreadsheet every day, we can um, make Excel always look for the bottom cell in a column by equaling a lookup function of 2 comma 1 forward slash. And we want the beta of the IWMs, which is in column J. So if we go um, J, colon um, J because we're not going anywhere and uh, less than greater than and two quotes and close that and comma and then J colon J again and see if that gives us um, 1.6536 so if you come down here to the bottom you'll see 1.6536 so if the next day your beta is 1.7 and you fill this row in you don't have to come up here and change the formula because I think yeah it updates to 1.7 so you can just fill in you just need to populate this row basically and you're gonna get your um, betas updating which is going to whoops got a little too far there and that's gonna change your beta here so we can do this again with um, the betas for the Qs. So in order to do that, I just copy the formula, and then I'm going to change this to the K column because that's where the beta for the Qs are. So here's K and K again, and that's going to give us 1.2. So we have 1.65 and 1.2, and here's our 1.65 and 1.2. So we get 1.7 and 1.3, for instance, and we come back up here you can see that we have 1.7 and 1.3 and that's going to change our percent and that's going to change our you know our our weighting um, and we don't have to do it every time I'm just going to take these out though because we're going to just do one more thing real quick so if we want to do IWMs for instance and we want to do shares what we could do is we could say um, we could put today's price and to do today's price we use the same formula here uh, if I could get it there we go Oops. so and then what we'll do is we'll put the price columns in so the price of the IWM's was C 
is column C and the Q's are column D. So if we go in here and change these to C and C and C and C again and do the same thing one column down and change these to D's then what we'll get is the price every day and then what we can do is we can uh, put in a number of shares and that's going to equal this um, dollar value divided by the share price and it's going to equal this dollar value divided by the share price. These aren't going to be dollars though these are going to be just numbers because that's just the number of shares. These are going to be dollars because that's the share price. So now you know the number of shares. So in the case of their trade you want to be long 37 shares of IWMs. You want to be short 60 shares of Qs and in the event that this changes, well it will change. So when it changes um, your proportions are all going to change and then this will spit out the number of shares that you want to have and you can decide you know, how much you want the, to let that beta relationship change bef between the two before you want to rebalance. You want to rebalance every day or every week or, or if you want to just do it depending on how much it moves. So that was it. That's their video. Um, hopefully I did a decent job of, of recreating it. Um, the research staff's really top notch. If you don't check out Tasty Trade, you really should support those guys. They fight the good fight. Um, they're in it for all the right reasons. Um, it's just a great group. They put out excellent material, and I uh, really appreciate what they do. So, hopefully, this helps you out. Um, you can put in any underlying you want here. So you can come back up here and you can change this out. You can go and uh, change your IWMs and Qs to uh, you know. GM and Ford or something like that if, if you want to do um, you know individual names rather than indexes anything you want and and this uh, spreadsheet will just repopulate for you change your trade size all right everybody thanks a lot for watching hope it helped uh, if you see any mistakes or you want anything changed or you see a faster way of doing something just put it in the comments section um, I love to learn new stuff so let me know all right thanks bye